This is hoping, I don't know why I just put my mic over there. It's meant to be in front of me. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Whoa, is my mic just unplugged? I heard a noise and I wasn't sure if it was or not. Okay, it looks as though it's okay. Oh my god, the music's loud. The music's loud. Okay, let's do this. Let us introduce our players to the three o'clock on Dash and Terminal. And the right hand side of the map from AT Gaming, it is Euphermal. And in the north side, the Red Terran player from Cascade, it's Cass! Let's hear it! Let's hear it for what you guys want to see. Cass, please, says Forgotten the One, I believe in you, Cass. K-A-S, Cass, K-A-S, Cass. Shramo007 says, I don't believe in Cass. Is it over, says Stray Renegan? No, it is just beginning. What else is going on in the chat? How long do I have to wait for the next game until it begins, which is now? Has Nani Wild Target finished? I have no idea. What's the next game? Well, now you know. What's your favorite SC2 player? My favorite SC2 player is Euphermal, man. This guy is a god. <laughs> nah. Euphermal is probably my best, like, in terms of, like, uh, StarCraft players, um, like, professional StarCraft players, Euphermal is probably my best StarCraft friend, in fact, by quite a long way. Um. I've got Starcraft friends who are from the UK and stuff, I've got lots of Starcraft friends, but like as a pro player I think Euphemus is probably my best friend. Cool. So yeah. Euphemus is my favourite player, I believe, man. I'm sub to a stream, what more could you ask for? I'm not sub to any other, okay, I'm sub to quite a few other streams, but you know. You know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. Cool. Alright, so um... What well, well, the opening is here from both of these players, it's gas first from both of them. So we're going to be seeing these factories coming down in a few moments, and Dash and Terminal is a very interesting map. I wonder how these guys are going to play out. I haven't seen any TVT on it just yet. So yeah, we'll see how this goes here as we, again, just in the early stages of Euphemal Cast. Again, qualifying match, $2,000 on the line in that place in WCS Challenger League. So you have an SCV coming across the map to scout from Euphemal to start things off again. Up until now, both players are mirroring each other with this gas first build. Tipo's on the way down for both of them as well. Go Euphemal, says Monik in the chat as well. Again, guys, continue to let us know who you want to win at this best of three, who you want to see in WCS Challenger League. We're going to get a little bit down to this SCV, but SCV will make it in. And we'll be able to loop around the back and see that gas and see how much is mined. He clicks on it and he sees the second gas as well. It's a perfect scout from Euphemal. Everything he needs to see. His own build is not going to involve the second gas, at least not just yet. So, um, this means he's probably going to expand a little faster. He's still going to be fairly aggressive. It looks as though it's going to be a marine mine and maybe some Hellion play mixed in with a medevac here. Here we go, here we go, finally you guys are cheering for people, Euphemal Swag coming in from Itchy, Cass, 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 coming in from Forgotten The One once again, Euphemal from Money, go go Euphemal from The Cold Fusion, and Cass says the Joker 27, go go Euphemal from Helm York, no Cass, go Cass, why do I cast solo only, I do not know, Euphemal Hype from Bigs 2K, Euphemal Dutch Pride, Euphemal Hype from Arturan, the Dutch Pride was from Shrama 007, Euphermal, Euphermal, Euphermal. Lots of you. I think Euphermal is probably going to be the favourite here then. He seems to be at least. Hellions following up. This first Widow Mines. This is nice. I mean, you drop the six Marines in the mine uh, from your medevac across the map into your opponent's base. You try and run by with the Hellions at the same time. Look at this. A fast expansion from Cass considering he's going into the second gas oil. He's actually opening with a Raven. And I actually kind of don't like this from Cass because he doesn't really have any units to realistically defend against this aggression which Euphermal's going for. You know, he's opened gas first, but what does he have? He's got a handful of marines. No medevac, though. The raven is only going to help so much. I actually really like this position right now from, um... Well, for Euphem, I really feel he's got the potential to do damage here. As he comes across, he might be able to die... Uh, to, I mean, he's going to start dropping here. And he needs to be a little bit careful. Oh, the hellion shot is huge here. Another hellion shot and more hellions coming in. Cast loses every single unit and... Immediately he's in trouble. This uh, Widow Mine is going to position itself to deny anything from going down here. This Widow Mine on the high ground for Euphemal. As he just picks it up, he's going to loop around it. He's just going to go into the main base. And this Raven can, what, drop an order turret? But Cass has just lost so much. And the order turret comes down, forced out here. 
Single Marine cut eats the Widow Mine shot as SCVs have to be pulled into this. But remember, there's a Widow Mine here. There is a Hellion, and this is not going to end well at all for Cass. As the Widow Mine lifts up, it's going to boost, uh, drop down a little bit closer to that mineral line. Some more units coming out here. The U Thermal gets a good shot into that mineral line, and now it's just going to take one shot from the Hellion here to continue doing damage. Saves the Medivac as well. Oh my god, U Thermal is going to win this game in literally a matter of seconds. This is absolutely... Did he, the Raven's still alive, so you can pick off that mine. But uh, Marines are going to start targeting down this Viking. And more SCV is going to go down as well. GG. Such a hard counter build. I mean, I, it, it's a really weird build from Cass. No, no units, doesn't use the factory at all, just Marines. I feel as though it should die to so much. And yeah, he, he, I mean, he just died to so much. And especially when you have micro like Euthermal. I mean, what can you realistically do? Like... You just, you, you know, if you don't, like, if you film a micros like that, you really can't win that game, I don't think. Gonna jump into Iron Fortress for game two of this best of three. You film very quickly becomes one map away from advancing to Challenger League. Now, as we're getting ready to jump, jump into this, Iron Fortress is our map. I'm gonna invite in here. The cast is getting into the lobby. Cass. Waiting for his invite as well. What a quick game number one. I really can't believe that that was just, 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 poof, dead. I mean, it was, it really was though, just such a kind of hard counter build. From, um. It's such a hard counter build. From, um. From you film. I mean, it wasn't designed to be a hard counter. Like, mm, I mean, it wasn't. <sighs> How do I say this? It's not designed to be a hard counter, right? Like, it's just an opening from you film. It's not designed to fully kill you. Well, it's meant to do damage, it's meant to give you some up control. It's not designed to fully kill your opponent like that, I don't think. It's a little bit insane. Wow. Caster, please. What did I do wrong? Oh, what did I do wrong this time? All right. Let's introduce our players. Euphermal is down to the bottom left side of the map. From AT Gaming, he leads one game to zero. Into the upper right, our red Terran player from Cascade, the one and only Cass. Again, his build just really did not pair up well against what Uvinal went for in that game. Um, it really, really didn't. And losing those Marines on the low ground, maybe if the Marines and the Order Turret were around, he could have held the high ground. He was almost destined to lose the CC, though. And, um, well, again, just kind of watching back in the game, I mean, again, like, what can he really do? He forced the Order Turret to the left-hand side of the base, he loops around, drops on the right, and again, there was just nothing you could do at all from that point on. It was a really unfortunate opening for Cass, and... Well, you thermal lead 1-0. Gas first from both of these players once again, so we may see a little bit of a mirror in the early stages. But again, it was mirrored early on last time, but they diverged very, very swiftly into kind of uh, into other things. And um, well, we've got a gas coming up here for you film. The drive's dropping down, and the same on the other side of the map from Cast. Not much to really uh, talk about right now. Not much to mention. TVT is a very nice matchup in terms of the early game. It's very interesting. You can see a lot of um, diversity. You can see a lot of diversity. You can see a lot of different openings. Even when like both players open gas first like this, you can see a lot of different kind of follow-ups. You know, you can see players going into a lot of different things, whether it's just a single gas, marine, hellion, medevac drop, mix in a mine or not. There's a lot of different possibilities. And that's what I love so much about TVT. It's so dynamic in the early game. It's what I love about a lot of the uh, mirror matchups. A lot of them are actually very diverse early on in the game, more so than kind of like TVZ. Because in TVZ, you kind of always go Hellions. It's kind of always based around Hellions. Sometimes you add a Banshee in also. In TVT, it's mostly based around 111, but it doesn't, you know, there's a lot of different ways to do it. I don't know. It feels very, it feels much more diverse. I love TVT as a matchup altogether, actually. I mean, 
to be able to kind of follow up and go into, um, you know, as both players here are actually going into a Reaper, by the way, after this cast first, so looking to find where their opponents might be. Um, yeah, um, there's just so much in TVT, which is so awesome. I really love the kind of mech versus bio thing, or the mi marine tank, marine tank's great too. Even mech versus mech can be very interesting. Well, I haven't seen a mech versus mech game for a long, long time. Reaper uh, is going to find this SCV here and will be the first to uh, claim blood on this map. In fact, no, an SCV over here also been found by the Reaper. Both players finding out where their opponents are then. As uh, Euphemus was actually scouting around with his Marine early on here and moving through towards the center of the map. These Reapers are about to clash, guys. There's a Hellion on the way across the map as well for both players. And I don't know who got the first shot. I think it's at the same time. Ooh. Oh, Euphil takes a shot on his uh, Hellion though, and that is not good for him, but he has a Marine coming in from behind! A little bit of Reaper Micro here, and actually Cass is going to be turned away, but there's another Reaper coming in. This Reaper for Euphil is starting to heal up a little bit, and he's going to start pushing Cass back. There's another Hellion from Cass though, now Euphil is the one who's going to disengage and run away. Uh, so this one Marine gets turned around to try and get a little bit more damage done. And um, interesting opening here, as both players will add on Reapers and continue here. Uh, with whatever else they can get. Two Reapers, two Hellions, two Reapers, two Hellions. In fact, three Reapers out for Cass already because he guess he skipped the initial Marine. And um, this does become a little bit interesting early on. Newfilm has a faster starport, and so he's already going into his um, Viking, in fact. And you know, early on in this game, a Viking can actually make a big, big difference. You know, if you have just a single Viking, which is going to be able to... Um, I don't like this for Newfilm. I think he has to pull away from three Reapers. He's completely outnumbered here. And he has to, yeah, he has to just pull away from this. Um... Early game, the Viking, if it lands, can do so much damage during the game. Um, you know, to these early Hellions, etc., etc. This Hellion's getting repaired up for Euphemia, that's why it retreated back home. As uh, this Viking's going to spot these units, and in fact, the Viking's going to be a good addition because Cass looks as though he wants to start heading into some Cloak Banshee play. The Cloak on the way now. Not enough money right quite yet for um, the Banshee. But that's going to get queued up there as a scan from Euphemia. It's perfect to identify what his opponent is doing right now. Cast needs to be careful. He doesn't want to advance up this ramp in towards this kind of uh, set of units from his opponent, although he will set essentially a bit of a soft contain on his opponent. And as these hounds are actually going to come down, he's going to find a great fight for himself here. Euphil, because Cast sent his Reapers up to the high ground. Euphil pulls back, and oh my god, this fight is absolutely one sided. Euphil will destroy everything from Cast in just a matter of seconds. Four Hellions, four Reapers lost. One Hellion, one Reaper lost for Euphil. That fight was, um, well, turned around so quickly. Um, Euphil is not bringing his Viking across the map, he's uh, making a Raven as well, so he's just doing the safe thing here. I really kind of feel though, like, um, if he built, brought his Viking across as well, there wouldn't be much to really deal with this Banshee. Engineering be on the way, but I think Cass actually realises he has no op other option other than to wall his opponent out of his base. Like, he actually has no option here. These uh, Reapers can jump up, Banshee will help pick off one of them, uh, so this Reaper needs to be a little bit careful. Banshee will start to move across the map, but with a Raven and Viking already on the way out here, Euphem is going to be in a pretty nice spot to be able to defend back at home. He's not really under any pressure at all. Um, you know, this Banshee shouldn't really be able to do anything, and Cass has started his command center, as has Euphem back at home. So, again, Euphem will just have a bit of an advantage on the ground right now, and that might slow Cass down in terms of uh, taking his uh, natural. But that should probably be, probably be about it. Banshee going to move forwards here. And this Banshee going to look to see what it can get up to. This Viking coming overhead on these Hellions. Viking Raven going to start moving forward. And in fact, that means the Viking Raven... Oh, he's got another Raven. And he's got a turret. Oh my god. Well, but what does Cast do now? He's actually sort of outnumbered. He needs a really good engagement with these Hellions. As uh, here we go. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be enough though. SCV's been pulled into this immediately. SCV's roasted away. An auto turret dropped down by Euphem as well. This tank's going to get taken down. So many SCVs are going to be roasted. And Euphem was just absolutely destroying this here. Viking lands as well to add in a little bit of extra DPS. Euphem just still has a little bit too much. But with these last couple of Hellions, Cass will be able to push this back just about. Oh, nice control by Euphem there. Really just picking up as much as he can before turning away. He's going to turn back once again. His Reaper coming in. And uh, this Raven's still around in Cass's main base, and at the same time, what does this Banshee manage to do? Eight kills, so he's actually slowed down the economy of uh, Euphemia a little bit here. Um, both players actually taking fairly similar worker damage, so Euphemia will take in a little bit more, and he still trails by three workers at this point in time. And this Cass now with a siege tank up, he's going to be sort of okay here. He starts up Stim as well. Euphemia is going to go into a counter cloak Banshee of his own, 
Um, because I guess he sees that his opponent isn't got Vikings on the way, or I guess, you know, Ufem has air control, so his opponent can't really go into Vikings, or I mean, if he does, he might be able to snipe them off. He can't really allow them to lift. So a Cloak Banshee play could do a lot here, although Marines are starting to come out as uh, Seeker Missile's going to come in. Oh, Cass has to realize this. Cass has to realize this. Splits everything away at the last moment. Oh, my God. Imagine all those Marines uh, got blown up. That would have been a disaster. As uh, these few units going to be uh, moving forwards just a little bit here. Natural Command Center will land. And um, again, we look at a situation where... Oh, uh, Seeker Missile's going to go down again. SCVs are repairing. The SCVs have to be pulled away, though. They are going to be pulled away in time. As, uh, oh, Cass loses his Viking, which isn't good. He doesn't have much gas to actually rebuild more. He can only build one here, which means he's still not going to hold the air control. And again, Cloak Banshee's coming up for you, Thermal. Guys, if you're on Team Schlappy, the things are still looking pretty darn good for him because I guess Cass has an engineering bay. You feel it goes into a stim of his own, which is later. It is later on the plus one as well. But I really feel as though this Cloak Banshee's just going to do so much because I guess there's Marines, but... I mean, the CCs don't really have much energy. I mean, relying on scans and marines. I guess he's about to have stim in a minute, though. So it's still a while for this Banshee to find a way to do some damage. And, um... Well, Banshee gonna start moving in here. Cloak's up. Gonna start working his way against these marines. Any marine he kills is less anti-air for Cast right now. You know, he's not even interested in the economy. He's just interested in slowing down the army of his opponent. And, I mean, anything he can grab here is nice. And uh, Cast can't reliably drop a scan. Unless Ufilm will really messes this up. Tanks have been left a little bit alone here. Now Stim is about to come in for his opponent. There's a Seeker Missile coming down. As the SCVs come forward to repair. And the Seeker Missile is going to go off. Banshee, uh, sorry, the tank does just about survive again. Nice repairs coming in from Cass. Ufilm with his own plus one on the way now again. His own Stim on the way too. And Cass just continue to lose, uh, take damage here. As double Cloak Banshee is going to start working the way against these Marines. And, um, I mean, again, what, what do you do in this sort of scenario as Cass? He's actually not, he's not really making anything. He starts to try and move out, but you feel with scans, sees it and starts to deal some damage. And he's just picking up so much damage with these Banshees. Jesus, he's got 13 kills on these already. And he's still controlling the outside of um, Cass's base. Cloak finishes and uh, gets used up here, but uh, Ufilm with good control can, of course, kite these Marines all day long. He's going to try and get himself a siege tank, but has to be careful because that stim is there. And he will lose one of these Banshees, finally. But look at this, another Banshee comes across the map. He's just going to keep making Banshees because he realizes his opponent can't realistically keep uh, you know, keep doing this the way he's doing it. Stim from the uh, uh, from over here as well. Hellion's going to come in as well to try and fight some Reapers too. Uh, I think Ufilm can't really take this fight though. A couple of Siege Chunks firing down and Ufilm has to back away from this one. His Stim's about to finish up. Combat Shield's on the way for Cast. That's something Ufilm has to head into at some point as well. His third CC on the way. He's up on five racks. Cass is on five racks as well. Oh, just four. Um, let's have a look at the units tab and see what position we are really in here for both players. So, Cass has actually 10 more marines, he's got f 4 more tanks. Ufilm has 2 banshees, he's got 2 vikings, and he's got a couple of extra reavers as well. Now, the reavers aren't going to really do much at all. And the banshees are currently kind of looping around the ravens as well, looking to kind of just harass his opponent. Now, if Cass is moving through the middle of the map, and these uh, units are left back at home harassing, um, then there's definitely the possibility that Cass turns around to try and deal with this. Otherwise, Ufilm really doesn't have much at all to defend back at home. Here come these auto turrets, and I mean, with two ravens, you can put down a lot of auto turrets. Four auto turrets come down, it's going to take a lot for Cass to clean this up. But I think Cass realizes the kind of uh, position he's in where he's got an opportunity to do damage. He's moving across the map. These banshees need to be careful, they're going to work their way against these marines. I think it's going to be in time. Ufilm realizes it as well. And um, does uh, cloak one of those up. Um, I mean, in the natural, these uh, so many worker losses for Cass basically. And the army supplies are evening up a little bit, but again, a lot of it's across the other side of the map and not really too useful for Ufilm. Siege tanks, combat shields here, and Ufilm is going to pull SCVs into this. He knows he needs it to defend as he needs to split these units up a little bit, get as good a spread as possible to clean out these siege tanks. He loses a lot of his workers. In fact, he loses the worker lead significantly. He's down to eight worker, eight worker deficit now. But of course, he's still controlling his opponent's main base. He's killing off Marines left, right, and center. Cass loses his entire army, his entire tank advantage, and immediately, Ufilm was going to move across the map with some tanks of his own and put the pressure on at Cass. Another scan comes in, and finally, this Banshee is going to be dealt with. Ufilm will again seven workers behind. His third CC slightly faster, so that may be able to make up for that to some extent. So will this push across the map, though, I think. Um, you know, Seeking Missile is coming onto the Ravens, so that's at least one of these tanks going to be cleaned out pretty quickly. Um, Viking control, air control is here as well for you, Ufilm, so that uh, Viking of Cass isn't going to do too much at all. And here we go, a couple of Seeker Missiles coming in, this tank can't do anything about it. Tank's just going to go down, scan to reveal what's there. 
No second Tanga. Tanga actually coming into position now. And I think Ufil might be just a little bit out of range. He doesn't see it on the high ground. Viking gets killed off though. So now actually Ufil was the one with the vision. And now he's going to start firing onto this tank. So he takes a nice little advantage there. This Reaper going to come in and be a little bit annoying for Cass over on the other side of the map. Another tank falls. And again, this air control for Ufil is huge right now. Being able to just slowly push forward. He's going to grab himself a couple of Marines. Cass does scan, but uh, Ufil was out of range of the siege tanks. The Marines have to pull away there. And again, this is a tough position for Cass right now. This Reaper does get dealt with back at home. Ufilm was caught back up in workers. And now he's at 100 supply to 75. Oh my god, Cass is just going to come into this. He's going to attack into this siege tank line. A lot of Marines here for Ufilmal. And Ufilm is actually just going to crush through this altogether. And Cass is going to look to lose pretty much everything here. He will hold on with a couple of siege tanks. Um, he actually, Ufilm will land one of his fighters there, which is a bit of a mistake. I think he's just going to lift up his tank, so he's just going to. I mean, he's got a medevac, so he's got air control. He moves forwards, and that's another tank down the drain for Cass. He just can't break out of this little bit of a continuous opponent's got good for him. Another tank gets taken. Game is called. Ufermal returns to WCS Challenge.